task gets done Can learning your letters be this much fun? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Weave Capacity Building Lab Day. This is our first Lab Day, actually, in this series and for the new year. Um, so welcome, everyone. We're very excited for today's Lab Day. We have um, different uh, people joining us from all over the UK, which is really exciting. Um, I see we have um, some Weave partners in the space as well. Good morning, good morning. Um, yes, my name is Rosa Cisneros. I am at Coventry University. I'm at the Center for Dance Research. I am, for those that would benefit from an audio description, I am a female sitting in a cream colored chair wearing a green mint sea foamy color jumper um, with coral colored dangly earrings. Um, I have olive skin tone, black hair that's pulled up into a bun and I'm wearing a headband that my daughter asked me to wear today. So it has a little rainbow on it. Um, and I'm sitting in front of a burgundy color wall. Um, so good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to sit down and have an open conversation with many friends and colleagues um, and really inspirational women from across the UK. Uh, the rules, the etiquette for today is that um, we are asking people to be very respectful about the topics that we raise as in any situation. Um, you know, you can agree, disagree, but we just ask that you do that respectfully. Please feel free to use the chat function. Um, we also have transcription, live transcription, that you can open that functionality or close it. Um, you can we want you to engage with us. This is an open conversation. Um, so we've kept it quite informal, but we will still be offering some key, let's say takeaways, hopefully for you to walk away from, to learn, hopefully you'll learn more about the project that we that we um, created, um, but also, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions and, you know, you might even want to start something very similar in your own um, spaces, uh, communities, or work places. So without further ado, welcome to the Roma Recycle, Reuse, Reimagine Lab Day, co-production with artists and Roma women and families. So today we have um, Marcela and Alexandra joining us from Liverpool. We have Yasmin, who is joining us from Birmingham, and we have Maria, um, who is in Coventry today. Um, and yes, my colleague Kozer from uh, Coventry is also our tech guru who is in the background. If you have any questions or um, need to communicate anything to us, either Kozer or myself are the people that um, to, to send us any messages that you, if you want to send something privately. So welcome ladies, welcome. Good morning. Hello. Morning everyone. Good morning Hello. everyone. Good morning Rosa. Hello. So I think we'll start first by having, please feel free to also have your cameras on or off. Again, our events are very family friendly. So if a cat or a dog comes in or a child, you know, jumps all over you, that is no problem. Um, usually it's my children that um, like to <coughs> crash my events. So um, feel free to, you know, just be in the space as you wish. I think we'll start with a message from our project coordinator from the Weave project, which is, which is an EU funded project with the CEF, the CEF 
funding scheme. So Alex unfortunately can't be here today. It's a very busy day for many people, but he did send us a message about the project and also about the capacity building um, series. So Koza, if we could please have that. Hello, my name is Alexandra Stan from IN2 Digital Innovations and I'm the coordinator of the WIF project. WIF stands for Widen European Access to Cultural Communities via Europana. The project WIF aims to develop and provide a framework for linking and presenting the connections between tangible and intangible heritage of cultural communities, also minority and underrepresented or misrepresented communities, and to bring them to the center of attention by making them accessible in Europana. The project has a European dimension and is in fact a collaboration between 12 European partners with very complementary expertise. IN2, ERIAC, the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture, Photo Consortium, the University of Coventry, Center for Dance Research, CRDI, Ayutamento de Girona, Pede Shumbo, Top Photo, Arctur, New University of Lisbon, Thinkcode, K. Loven, and the Europana Foundation. The project has been co-financed by the Connected Europe Facility of the European Union. On our website you can find a lot more information on our resources, our results, and you can follow us on Twitter at weave underscore EU and join the conversation using the hashtag weave lab day. Europana is an initiative of the European Union, financially and politically supported by the European Commission since its launch in 2008. Europana imagines a cultural heritage sector powered by digital and a Europe powered by culture, giving it a resilient, growing economy, increased employment, well-being and a sense of European identity. The Europana website is an amazing resource providing its users with over 50 million records uh, for discovering engaging stories and finding educational materials and well now you can also find very interesting content from the WIF project itself here a selection of videos from our partner ERIAC. WIV is based on four pillars. First of all, it will collect and aggregate to Europana new content related to different types of cultural communities, including 3D models and point clouds, videos and photos. Some of the communities and organizations will for the first time aggregate content to Europana. The second pillar is communities involvement and capacity building. The WIF framework will specify hands-on methodologies for communities to select the content and collections to be aggregated and to engage with the project activities in Europana. The methodological framework will also explore the ways in which intangible cultural heritage and tangible cultural heritage can be more closely connected. Complementing these activities are capacity building actions for helping cultural heritage institutions to navigate their digital transformation and their ability to manage intangible heritage and heritage of cultural communities and to connect them to innovative SMEs, cultural communities and cells and to Europana. The topics addressed in the materials that um, are being created include information about sensitive topics such as um, the relation to identity politics and the issues of virtual repatriation and restitutions. A third pillar of the project is the WIF Toolkit. These are a series of tools for storing and management of 3D content, for manual annotation of videos, for automatic enrichment of metadata, and for the curation of um, and publishing of uh, scrapbooks and stories. The final pillar is engagement. This will be done through a series of Europana editorials as an exhibition about uh, Roma, a series of blog posts, galleries and so forth. We reach out on various channels, you have already mentioned the website, Twitter, YouTube um, as well, newsletters. 
um, we carry out scientific dissemination and we plan a final project conference. Thank you for your attention, I hope you enjoyed this introduction and I wish you a great event. So there's our message from Alex, Alexandru Stan, who, um, as he said, thank you, Catherine, nice little applause there. <laughs> yes. So what I'll do is I will just introduce the overall project very quickly in five minutes using a PowerPoint and some visuals, and then we'll get into the conversation and some of, um, and allow everyone else to speak. Um, because everyone had various roles within the project, so I thought I'd frame it first so that everyone can see um, a sense of where they came in, and then um, we'll we'll dis we'll discuss things. So, Koza, if we could have the PowerPoint, please. And I picked up right where Alex left off. Um, so, as Alex said, we this is the Weave project. M the book project was not initially part of the Weave project. This was a separate commission. So Koza, the next slide, please. Um, it was a separate um, commission. I was commissioned by the Seasons for Change, um, Paul Hamlin Arts Admin um, organization to carry out a project during the lockdown. Well, it was actually prior to lockdown and then the, the pandemic happened and we all went to lockdown. So the project had to shift. So initially it was its own separate project that I was doing with my artist hat on. Um, and eventually it's evolved into its own um, artistic research investigation that has informed now the Weave project and now is, is continuing to develop and is now within the, the university. So the initial project was called Roma Recycle, Reuse, Reimagine. Um, I had an idea that I should that somehow we needed to involve children and families looking at climate justice and social justice because there is a, a real connection there and I wanted to explore that more but also through the eyes of my fellow community members but also through the eyes of children and um, next slide please so in talking about and reading children's books to my children, my six-year-old, I realized that there's a real space there to explore, to look at some of these these bigger questions. And it was very interesting, the conversations I was having with my own daughter, Yasmin, who was also named Yasmin, um, around climate justice and around, um, yeah, big powers and big concepts like capitalism and machinery and recycling. And so it kind of, this opportunity landed and um, I was very fortunate that I was asked to commission this book. The book was supposed to be with families, Roma families from the South Yorkshire area, um, but given lockdown and then I kind of realized that there were several families that were interested and several artists, many of who are here today. Um, I was able to convince the funders to switch the, the, the kind of scope of the project. Um, so we opened it up to, we moved everything online and we opened it up to a larger group of people. And so co-creation was always at the heart of it. I knew I wanted to co-create, co-author a children's book with families from across the UK. What that actually meant, I didn't know. What themes, how we were going to do it, I had no idea, but I wanted to be led by the families and by people's ideas. Next slide, please. So during, as I said, this happened during the lockdown. I was adamant that the lockdown was not going to change the spirit of the project because a big part of the Roma community is our families, is our network, is being next to each other. And even though we were very far away from each other, I wanted to see how we could translate the energy of being body to body and in a space um, to these several environments. So we decided to create craft bags um, sending children's book, arts and crafts materials, um, different children's books for different ages as well to the families and also recycling bags because we were going to um, look at what recycling meant and the importance of recycling and how you know, what a children's book on recycling might look like. So I did a lot of research on different children's books that were out there. Um, here are some examples of those craft bags that we put together. We had over, I think I created over 110 craft bags and posted those out to families 
throughout the 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 country not everyone engaged with the workshops which was fine but they received the material and some sent me some ideas and images and some didn't but that was fine and particularly during lockdown it was i think a way that to 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 be connected next slide please um, in the process of preparing for the workshops, I relied a lot on my network, on my friends and my uh, colleagues, some that are here today. Um, but we also realized that we couldn't continue to just keep sending out craft bags. A lot of, uh, the majority of the money from the commission went to paying everyone that was involved. So the families that contributed and were part of the workshops received a fee because that's important for me that, you know, people's honor, I honor people's ideas and their experience and their own expertise and knowledge. So people received a fee. It wasn't very big, as they'll tell you, but it was a fee. Um, we also invested in the craft materials and the books, um, sending that out to different families, different organizations. Um, but we realized that that wasn't sustainable. So we decided that it would be interesting to record and a reading of these books. These are two examples of the books. We recorded three books. Um, so we photographed the books. We then read the books in English, in Slovak Romanes, and in Romanian. So Yasmin did the Slovak Romanes, uh, Maria did the Romanian, and the English, I can't remember who did it. Um, but we, we made films that then we sent out to all of the people that were involved as well as to schools. And remember, this was during lockdown when everything was starting to kind of move online. There were very little resources. We weren't sure what was happening. Um, so people could engage with these ideas and with these books without necessarily having the book in front of them. And so Yasmin and, and Maria translated the books into their languages. Um, and we, we put that on YouTube. I got permission from the author. So again, I was contacting the, the authors and the um, uh, companies, the, the publishers, and asking them, please, please let me do this. And they said yes. Um, we had a book on Greta as well, Greta and the Giants, which is a, a pretty big book, um, but they said yes, we could do that. So we also created this this material. Next slide, please. This was um, the Greta and the Giants. So yes, and then we moved on to the online workshops. As you can see, there is uh, Alexandra, and she organized a workshop in her area with her families. We'll talk about that. You can share your experience in a moment. You can see some of the artwork that my own children were doing. Um, they were helping me prepare the bags. Some of the artwork from some of the families in Coventry um, that, uh, yeah, that they were creating. Next slide. Some of the poems, some of the writing, some of the 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 um, the the kind of three D um, sculptures that they were making, and all of this material, particularly with this this um, animal farm, was all recycled. So the woman who put together those boxes for me, she she's from Pittsmore Adventure Playground. She said, Rosa, we've got tons of things. We have tons of recycled materials. I'd love to, to deliver it. So we went around and delivered um, these boxes to the families. Next slide, please. You can see, um, I'll just read this because a, a lot of this was also, this artwork was directly inserted into the final book and so maria can talk a little bit about that because she was one of the gra the graphic designer who who put the book together but we honored the the children's writing their ideas um marcela who's next to alexandra um came up with the title of the book and the name that we'll talk about in a moment um but i'd like to read this letter it's one of the kids he wrote dear queen we tried to stop pollution and we need to start recycling and help save our planet from Spider-Man. So there was a lot happening in the um, workshops that were coming up where the young children were saying to me, Rosa, 
you know, we need the people in power. We need the people in those positions of power to, to help us. It can't just be me. It needs to be the people with power. And the fact that, you know, the young people already understood that was, was quite surprising and revealing to me. Next slide, please. Um, I asked many people from the project to write a reflection and a letter to the planet, what they would say, and also a letter to their future self. Next slide, please. Um, this is just a quote from one of the participants. Next slide, please. Yes, and so here today is one of the next steps, being in this lab day, being part of the WEAVE project, um, informing the WEAVE project in some of the ways that we are working is a really important next step for us. Um, a call to action for us, that means a number of different things, but continuing to um, get the book out to people. So I'm sending and delivering the book free to people all over the UK. In fact, we've, we're getting a lot of press for the book, a lot of positive press, I should say, because there's also negative press, but positive press that is um, highlighting all of the beautiful work from the families. And that is spreading widely. So I have people from Romania. I have people, the German um, Roma and Sinti Documentation Center has asked for it to go into their archive and into their library. I have libraries throughout the UK or people contacting me that are teachers saying, how can we get this into our schools? How can we work with you? Can we create another book? Um, and we are currently translating the English book into um, Slovak Romanes and Romanian. So we're going to print the new book and send that out to even more people. We have a film that will we're currently finalizing that will be available next month. There'll be a lab day around that. So you can come and visit us again and learn more about that. Um, yeah, and we just want to really spread our love and kindness that we kind of, that was guiding the creation of the book because, you know, the Roma fam, the Gypsy Roma Traveler community has a really negative stereotype that's attached to us. I. If anyone living in the UK is aware of the Jimmy Carr situation right now and the way the community is um, actively responding, um, it's unbelievable that we're even in that situation and have to be having that conversation, but we are. And so for me, this book, and I think for all of us, this book is really kind of a counter narrative and a way to fight against that anti-Gypsyism and Romophobia that is very much a part of our daily life and it affects us in a number of ways both personally professionally um, and yeah so I end the PowerPoint and now we open it up for discussion I invite everyone to turn on their camera if they want um, yes so yes I open it up to all of the lovely women that were part of the book um, I don't know if anyone has any initial thoughts, comments that they want to share. Thank you, Rosa, for putting this uh, presentation up. It really combines everything that we did and that just shows what a great leader you are, bringing everybody together and making us work for the same aim, for the same goal. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, it's our project, you know, we work together. And I think the name of the book is called Korkodusha Saves the Park. Um, so um, I, I would like to maybe call Marcela, who actually came up with the idea of Korkodusha and the, the name. So Korkodusha, Marcela, Alexandra, can you tell me a little bit about a Korkodusha tree and how we came up with that, how you came up with that idea, Marcela? We came up with the idea because when I was little, me, my cousin, my brothers went to the park. There was lots of trees, all of Korkodush that we say with that word with the first. And we liked them very much. We take them sometimes my mom makes as well like sheep over here, and we like it. So always when we go to the park, Korkodush, but we didn't forever though. 
Yeah. We had been to put all that stuff back together. That is like the idea was um it was to remain all the, the stuff from the back from the memories and that is a bit cute childhood. Childhood, yeah. Yes, lovely. That's right. And um Alexandra, I rang you and I said, oh, Alexandra, I have this idea. I always say that I have an idea. You said, okay, call me tomorrow. <laughs> so I rang you tomorrow. And then I said, what do you think? Do you think you can be involved? And you said, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. And then I said, oh, I have blah, blah, blah money that I could pay you and the families. And you said, no, Rosa, it's not about the money. Don't worry. And I said, no, 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 yes. What can we do? How can we do this? So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much, Rosa, that you contact me and give us an opportunity, you know, to do this book, to be part of this project. Sincerely, for us, is uh, something wow, because it's first project nationally that we are involved. And it's like European, because you say that a lot of centers, European centers contact you and they want the book. You know, is is something very nice to see uh, that the work is appreciated and the families, the ideas that they have, they were appreciated. Um, was a challenging period um, in the pandemic. Uh, was online all the things I needed to contact the families, uh, and was uh, I know that Rosa said that uh, will be by um, Zoom. A lot of Roma families doesn't know to access the Zoom. What I needed to do after my work to go for each family home and to install it and to show them how to access the Zoom. This for, for me was first uh, to to bridge the barrier to uh, to take out the I because they don't have the IT skills. They know only the Facebook and these kind of things. They don't know how to access the Zoom, and I needed to show them. Um, was alright in two in two evenings. I was able to go to each family. It was the pandemic? I was afraid to go in the house. You know how they are the Roma. They, they are some of them. They were big families. I needed to stay outside in the house because I don't want people to see me to make pictures and show like Alexandra go inside the families and these kind of things because it was the lockdown in that moment. But in the end, we sorted and uh, it was very nice to see them in the morning wake up and ready for the Rosa workshop uh, was something new. Also for me, uh, the subject, I am, I do a lot of work with the recycling um, in the community here in Liverpool. It was not something uh, very new, the subject, but the involvement of the family in these kind of things by art with the books give us after this a lot of ideas. Like right now we have a book. This is like a good opportunity for others. Take the book. We will do storytelling with the children. This is our idea in the future. We'll, um, we'll uh, make session with the children to write letters for the city council to speak about the space because they don't have a space where to play. Like this book give us a lot of ideas how we can engage with the community. And um, for sure is a start for us to to make the to be a positive to be positive because the, our community is a positive thing but people doesn't see unfortunately and uh, sometimes we need to fight and we need to show no we are like this and we are a beautiful um community that's right alexandra that's right and um you know i think the point you said around, you know, the the Zoom and and showing families that was something, Maria. If you want to talk about the, you created a kind of Zoom, how to use Zoom in English and in Romanian. Oh, I think we lost Maria. So yeah, we created that, but it, so we had that information that we were giving out, um, but we were also relying a lot on, yeah, you know, that's people right. like. In the first steps of sorry Maria you cut out that's all right so in the first steps of the project I had to create this uh, design wise uh, informational how to use the zoom uh, because obviously for some of us it's obvious how to use and how to connect online but for some it's not that obvious and uh, people needed a guide on how to do it. So that was my initial role. 
to create this. And then uh, obviously Alexandra went out and uh, helped them to connect. Yeah, and I think that's an important um, part of the, you know, Alexandra was saying we're a very kind of positive community and we support each other and we're very generous, I think, with our time, with, you know, our skills. Um, we support each other. We have a network, a very big network that we rely on. Um, of course, like in any community, there's, you know, things that happen. But, you know, I think in general, it's a community that um, really supports each other. And Alexandra worked very hard to kind of really go out and get the families, explain to the families what we were doing, because that was the other thing. There were lots of, what is going to happen? You want me to do what? And delivering craft bags, what do I do with this? And and then it was, you know, quite lovely to see how, how the families use the material. Um, and what kinds of ideas they came up with. I don't know, Yasmin, if you have, if you want to say something about your involvement with the books and with the digital side. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Yasmin and I'm based in Birmingham. I'm Roma advocate and Roma activist and currently studying to become a teaching assistant. And I'm also Slovak, Czech and Roma interpreter. Um, my initial enrollment in this project was to translate and transcribe um, three books. Initially, it was three books. Now it was four because I translated the Korkadusa Saves the Park as well and transcribed that. But initially, I was asked um, by Rosta to translate Recycling, um, Greta and Giants, and Somebody Swallowed Stanley, which I did. It was a fantastic uh, opportunity for me to express myself and to help others to understand such an important message and to learn also something about recycling, which I didn't know myself. And I'm feeling extremely honored and privileged um, that I was approached and being able to be participant in this project and to help to spread the message. Um, yes, after I transcribed the books, I was also um, asked to lead a campaign called Invisible I interviewed several women in Roma of Roma heritage in Slovakia. And the answers, um, what they gave me to some of the questions were um, so powerful. And, you know, the, this was the first time these women were heard and their voices were, you know, their voices were heard and their opinions were valued and appreciated. And it was, it was, it was incredible for us to see, you know, what their answers were and how much they would want to participate, but they didn't have the opportunity to do that because Roma community is always pushed on the edge of the society and they're not being given a chance to speak and to express themselves. But these projects showed the opposite that we can do it, that Roma community can do it. And this is a, such a beautiful community with so many ideas and opinions. And th this project just gave you know this community a chance and not just this community, but it also shows the example to other communities, minorities, disadvantaged communities, that they can they can do it, that everyone can do it. We just need to work together. That's right, that's right. And I think that, um, of course, my computer is pinging lots of updates at me today. So excuse all of the pings that keep happening. Um, but, you know, thank you for that, Yasmin, and thank you for your involvement in the book. Um, Everyone played a, an equally important role in, in creating the book. I'll show you the book in a moment um, so you can see how the ideas and how we workshop things. But you, you were saying, Yasmin, that, um, you know, the community was given an opportunity to kind of come together and to work together. Can you, does anyone have any other feelings or thoughts around that? What that meant for you? Yes, Alexandra, Marcela. Uh, for me, it was, was very nice to be able to do um, a book with characters that the Roma can, the children can identify. Because you remember, Rosa, I was asking, because we have a Mandela 8 project, where um, we want to share um, books from the Roma history, Roma culture, or we don't have anything for the children, unfortunately. And this book, uh, for me, is very good to be shared, and but it's only the start. I think that is needed more. 
we, we don't need to stop here and we see if this project is working, we can do more things. Because the children, the Roma, they need to identify in books. They need to see characters like them. They need to be aware that all the things that is outside from the community is also available for them. Opportunities, uh, because um, we are like this. All the things that we see in TV, uh, in mass media, we are thinking that it's not for us, it's for the others. But it's not true. We want to show that all the opportunities is also available for them. And this book gives them uh, the opportunity to have a voice, give them the opportunity to see that they are important in the community. And if they see that it's not um, that they have an issue in the community, they can share with people from the city council and uh, with in the school with other people. This is uh, for me is very important that they can identify with the characters. That's right, Alexandra. Maria, you raised your hand. So following from what Alexandra just said, I want to mention the making the graphics of the book. Uh, and what was the most important thing for us to follow was to have the children's drawings and the children's characters and the children's words written in the book. Of course, a book is made in a very professional way and it looks really nice. And, uh, but what was the most important thing for us is to have their own drawings in the actual book. So uh, framed in a graphic design way, but with their own uh, apports to it. And also, and also uh, we have some very specific Roma words that are in the book, which usually you won't find in this kind of uh, books and i feel like this is a very important thing for uh, roma children and roma community as well to see themselves represented in such a way that's right that's right and um we inserted those rule those words because it also came up in the workshops and we didn't want to kind of clear you know change that and we wanted to honor people's ideas um but also because it's important that the families that we see and learn from each other as well and so at the end of the book we also had a little bit of an information kind of explaining what those words are um where people might go to find more information um and and to really see that you know the the concepts within the book are can be transferred to other communities and that these ideas around recycling or taking care of each other community um yeah being an activist and being a young person as well all of that emerged from the families and from um the, the workshops marcel i don't know if you have any thoughts on um because you were you were also uh you came up with the idea for Korkodusha, one of our the superhero in the in the book. But also, you were with your 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 son or daughter. I can't remember. I think it's your son. He's my daughter, but oh. I have three of them. Three. So okay. Come all over the ideas. Yes. Honestly, yeah, she likes to draw so much. So she been with me making that drawing. I was making the trees, and she made all of it. The things about yeah. all the you know the food the things, but it was nice. Because, you know, part, to be part of it, it was great. You know, pandemic, all close with three children. <laughs> it was fine to have someone to talk and to be part of this. this because anyway, I was doing the recycle thing like for two years already when we started the project. But they give me some more confidence to make more recycling and be OK with that and to talk so much on all the things. Sometimes we make jokes, me and my brother, and he told me that I don't know nothing and I'm not clever. And now it's me. I'm on a book. I'm clever now. <laughs> and he was like, look, my name is on a book. Sophia was laughing so much when he saw it, her name and she was excited to say it. So it was great to have that and to be part of it. Anyway, you were there and support me with Spanish as well. And I don't know something. I just told you and you support us. Thanks for that. 
That's right. So I think, um, thank you for that. And it was lovely. You know, I think that was the, there were families. <laughs> um, I think in the film, we'll, we'll also kind of capture the, the different families and how we workshopped on Zoom. Um, but, you know, Alexandra was translating from English to Romanian in some instances. You know, you and I were speaking in Spanish sometimes and kind of looking at talking at those characters. Um, so, you know, language was, was not a barrier for us because we really wanted to find a way forward. Because um, oftentimes I think that's a, a question, how do I work or how do I engage with the community? I think one takeaway would be for those in the room that are kind of interested in that side of, of this work, uh, workshop, one takeaway would be, you know, find a community connector like Yasmin, like Alexandra, like Marcela, to, that can support you and liaise and that are trusted by the community and they will support you in finding the, the family members to come and work together with you. Um, and, you know, and also I think it, it's to honor their time, even though everyone was very generous and saying, no, 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 I don't want a fee. I think it's still important to offer that fee because there's an expertise and um, uh, an understanding of the community and a trust that is priceless, by the way. <laughs> um, so I think that that's really important, you know, when you're working in this way to really uh, cost in people's time and efforts. Um, and having said that, you know, many of the families in Coventry took the fee but actually said they didn't want it for themselves. They wanted to create um, a children's library at their center. Even though they knew the center, well, they didn't know when the center was going to reopen in Foles Hills, they put their money together and bought more arts and crafts materials and more books um, for a library. And they created a little recycling arts climate justice corner in their center, which is now open. And that's where, you know, the families and, and children are now kind of using that. So again, I think it just highlights that the, the families, even though, you know, money could be welcomed <laughs> to support their day to day, they still decided to take that money and to invest it and to give it back to their community. Um, so yeah, so I, I just highlight that. And, you know, we were very lucky that the Coventry Telegraph picked that story, they heard about that story, they picked it up, wrote about it, and they published it. And from that story, we then got lots of other um, requests for press. So that's another, I think, component of this that me is kind of overseeing the project. It was always very important to use social media, to use my networks, to use newsletters, to use my contacts to celebrate, to show what the community is doing because there's so much negative press out there. They don't, they're pollution, they're this, they're that, they're steel, they're criminals. And all of this beautiful, positive stuff that's happening isn't normally out there. I think Alexandra, you started by saying that. So that was another thing. We're constantly kind of putting that out there, not because, you know, it's like, oh, look, it's the Rosa show, but because it's important and it's part of the activism. So that was another thing. And, and you know, this this one journalist who did an incredible job, who sat down with Maria and myself to discuss numerous times with us, actually, she put out several stories that were looking at the families in Coventry or the project, and that led to a number of other things. Um, Yasmin, do you want to talk a little bit about your own kind of work as um, of, of working with your daughter um, and, and kind of what you learned from the project and what impact it had on you and your family. Um, I've learned so much from this project. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I did not really know a lot about recycling. I knew obviously what recycling was, but I didn't know its importance and why it is done on such a, why it should be done on such a large scale, why, why everyone should be really recycling. Um, and I also learned how important it is to show our children the importance of, of it and to teach them from as young as age as possible, but it's never too late. It doesn't matter whether your children are over 18 or whether they are under 18. It, there is still time, it's still time to show, show them and to show us no matter what, of what age we are. I've learned um, that recycling stops pollution. It helps to reduce it. it doesn't, um, it, it, does, it does helps us save energy 
know, the fossil fuels which are being released in order to produce energy, they are reduced, which obviously is damaging our climate, is, is changing our climate. Um, people losing houses over the, you know, the sea level raising. I've learned this from Simple Children's book books. I, I can't believe how much I didn't know. Um, I, I've learned that, you know, the um, plastics produced from like new raw materials and uh, and if that's obviously if there is a demand for new raw materials, obviously more energy is being used and the more fossil fuels are being released to, to the air. And, you know, by recycling, we can reduce the demand for raw materials and for energy use and, and reduce the energy use. And we can really save our planet. And it doesn't matter. We can maybe say to ourselves, oh, what, what's it going to make a difference if I'm just going to do it? What about other people? It will make a difference. Any single little step counts. And we need to do everything what we can to save our planet until before it's too late. And I just learned so much. And I felt so embarrassed in myself. Like, how could I not know this? But then I just felt, hmm, I shouldn't be feeling embarrassed. It's because there's not enough information. Our community is not being included. Um, many times that, you know, like, um, especially in Slovakia, in many Roma camps, there is, there is there no, there are no bins. There's just one big skip for the whole community to put the rubbish in. And what are they supposed to do? They, they, they can't access the centers because they are not being welcomed, uh, especially in many European countries, not just Slovakia, many European countries. Um, they, they, they're not being spoken to, they're not, they not, they don't not being included. So how can they know what to do if no one tells them they're not being included? And if, you know, people do not want to collaborate and participate, get them participated in, how can they know, how does, how, how, commun how can the community know what's the right thing to do? And if there are no uh, recycling bins, they, some of them, from my interview um, with the um, Roma women, some of, some of them, um, some of them didn't even know what the recycling has been where, because they, they never, they, they never heard about it and they never even seen them. Some of them seen them, but they weren't sure what they were used for, or they heard about recycling, but they weren't sure what that meant. And it is because there's just not enough resources, not enough engagement from other communities with this community. And that's such a shame because this community wants to get engaged, but is not being let to get engaged in many countries, which is such a shame. Thank you for that, Yasmin. Thank you for that very honest, um yeah sharing of your own experience um I'm, i know that alexandra and marcella need to leave at 11. so Kozer, i've seen the question that i will raise but i just didn't first want to say marcella alexandra do you have anything that you'd like to share and then i'll open it up to questions so that you can ask them questions directly only one thing then i want to thank you very much and it's great to see maria jasmine that we are all in this and they are part of the community um, and the people to not be afraid to ask our support or other support of uh, people from organization around the UK because the community is open to work. Only give them the opportunity. This is important to understand because a lot of um, people from city council, institution, public institution, they think that uh, Roma is a it's a hard reach, like it's very hard to reach the community. It's not true. Only you need to find the right people um, and you will be able to speak with them and they and work with children because the children right now, they know English, they are open. And I, me, I like to, to say that the children, they are the best ambassador of our community right now. They are our new generation and they understand that they are part of the UK. And we are part of the UK right now because we decided to stay here and the people need to respect us, to not make jokes. I think this is important. Uh, they need to, to, to respect our history. And this book is a proof that we, we can do more things together if we stuck together. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you. Marcella, did you want to say anything or? I really will say thank you to all of you to make us part of it and we hopefully make another project together. 
Yeah, yeah Port Kodusha <laughs> might save not the park, maybe she'll save the school. Who knows? Yeah. We don't know. We have to see. We'll get together and we'll see what happens. Yes. We're open. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, any questions from the audience before Alexandra and Marcela leave? I want to give them, give everyone an opportunity to ask them directly something if they want. Okay. Um, I would like to ask, um, oh, I see Kozer's question. It says, Kozer says, Oh, what are your hopes for the book? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Kozer, we'll get to yours in a moment. But, um, uh, what are your hopes for the book? Uh, Marcela, Alexandra, we'll start there. Uh, yeah, I uh, I say in the beginning that right now we use the book in workshop. We do, we do an educational session with the children from the community. We, uh, we, sh uh, we share the subject of recycling. We give them the opportunity to make a letter, to write a letter to the city council. Um, but my hope is to not stop this book to be the first one because uh, it's a real need in our community. Um, and for sure, uh, for me, it's important the book to reach uh, more communities from all the city from UK and schools um, and other uh, people who wants to work with the Roma to be able to reach easy the book, to be aware if they want to buy it, to be able to buy it, because I think that is important for them to find their um, some educational tools to work with the Roma. Thank you for that. Yeah, and anyone who's contacted me about the book, um, you know, I just we give it the book away for free because I have lots of a bit a portion of the the printing costs were covered by the project, but also personally, I'm in a position where fortunately I can invest in that. So I, I don't want money to be a barrier. So anyone that contacts me that wants the book, they get a book. <laughs> so you know, if you want a book, you get a book. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone else wants to answer. Uh, Catherine's question. We will get to your question, Kozer. It's not going away, but I just wanted to. Um, yes. Uh, Yasmin, Maria, anyone um, else? Yes, I would like to answer Catherine's question. Um, for me, my hopes for this book are is to be that this book is basically widespread all over the world, not just in this country, but all over the world in every single country. And um, I would like um, the community, all, all the community, to, to see Roma you know, in a more positive way. And I would like this book to be also used um, in, in schools and colleges as well, and in nurseries, because unfortunately there are many books, but they, there is a lot, many times I've seen um, some books where there was a very negative picture of Roma community. And I would, this to, I would like this to be changed and I would like to bring this book into it. And also like Alexandra and Marcella mentioned before, which I really agree with, um, not, not to stop here, to continue to do more stuff like this because this community needs it and this community needs to be included. They, they craving to be included. And, and I think this is the right way to be recognized and be included through these simple books that are so powerful books. I see that there's a question, Pru Poreta. Would you like to ask your question? Yes, please, if yeah. I can. I have, worked, yes, sorry. I have worked with uh, only a little bit with the Coventry Roma community and they are beautiful. And um, when we went, we spoke with a Romanian ambassador came to Coventry and we took her for a tour around the area first before we went to the Broad Street Hall and uh, lots of speeches, food, but then we had fun together because we made the stories happen and we acted out some stories and it was really good fun. I haven't seen your story and I would love to be able to access it. And I think we could use this. We do storytelling with lots of people in communities, schools, all over the place, not just Roma. And I think it would be great to highlight that your book has been made. It sounds really nice. I haven't read it, so I don't know. And I've seen some of the little pictures, which I think are brilliant. Um, and I think 
you know, if we could use your book, if you allow us, we have musicians and we do mime and we use puppets to tell the stories. Maybe, you know, we could use your book as well and make it part of what we do. I think absolutely. it would be wonderful and we could film it and show it, show you what we do with it. Yes, absolutely. That would, I think, be an honor for all of us to, you know, yes, absolutely. I'll share one, um, we'll answer Kozer's question and then I'll share the, show you the book and you can also see some of the other authors um, from the book. Um, but Alexandra, I know that you have to leave. So thank you so much for joining us. You have another important meeting to dash off to. So thank you so much. Um, and yes. If, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Rosa. you, Alexandra. Thank you. Thank Gracias, you. Marcela. <laughs> bye bye. Um, yes, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's a real, I think honor is, is the best word, but you know, it's really exciting to see how people want to reuse the book. And that was the hope that we could reuse, uh, you know, the, the things we have in home, reuse our skills and, you know, find ways to educate each other, which I think links to Kozer's question, which I will read now. Um, it says, can you talk a bit about how you engage communities uh, oh, uh, to, to care about recycling and the climate? Often migrant communities are caught up in the struggle of day-to-day -day survival that environmental matters fall to the sideline. How do we bring the conversation to the forefront? I may be generalizing here, so my apologies. Of course, migrant communities care about these issues as much as any other, but how do we bring that conversation up and what work can local authorities do to help with this? It's a great question, Kozer. And um, I think that was the, there's several kind of replies that's quite layered. Um, and I'll reply and then give others the opportunity to also have share their their experience um number one was the i was quite fortunate that through this commission i was also learning about climate justice um and climate change so for the commission we had two or three months where we were being we were receiving information and lectures and courses and also engaging with other artists that had been creating content or artists um, residencies or um, work around the issues from across the world. So I asked if Maria could join me in some of those meetings so that she, because I knew Maria was going to be involved from the very beginning. So I said, you know, I know very little. I don't know how much you know. Maybe we can both learn and kind of keep talking and learning from each other and brainstorming together. So the, the, Seasons for Change said yes to that. So Maria was also attending these classes with me. So I was learning really about the issue from a global perspective. And, and through that work, A, you get the science, but B, you also um, see how much indigenous, how much it matters to indigenous communities, how indigenous communities are approaching this or what activism means. So it shifted my kind of understanding of that you know, of what matters and what doesn't matter and how to maybe talk about that in different sessions. Um, and one of the things that I think felt important was to show that what we do has an impact. What we don't do has an impact. And in the workshops that kept coming up, so yes, you know, I think, yes, I mean, we talked about that, you know, how can we um in the day to day when we're maybe thinking about our families the kids are sick recycling is or climate justice is you know kind of very fancy schmancy buzzword but it's something that maybe seems removed but it was just kind of coming back to saying to the families and to, to myself what we do matters and we might not be able to control the moment or this current situation, but we can control how we react to something and that's power. And so that was a lot of the kinds of conversations we were having with the families, with the community connectors, looking for books that also kind of showed that. So I think Stanley, Stanley swallows a, a plastic bag. It's a little bit of a sad book, actually. It's not like happy. It's not, but that sadness, I think, was really important to show. And you kind of feel very sad with Stanley's um, 
situation. And I remember, Yasmin, you also said, oh, it's a little sad. So, you know, again, it, it's showing that it's not something just for kind of the rich or the upper middle class or the hippies, but it's really all of us. I don't know, Yasmin, if you want to share. Um, it, it actually made me cry, <laughs> that book. Um, it's basically about Stanley is a plastic bag which has been thrown into an ocean and that bag has been swallowed by different creatures. Uh, thankfully, most of the creatures were able to kind of um, spit Stanley out or like, you know, let, let him go the plastic bag and there was not damage done. However, not all of the creatures, some of the creatures, which was a turtle in this instance, in, in this book, Jesus swallowed Stanley and he got stuck in her throat and she, she couldn't breathe. He, she basically swam to the shore and she was dying. And then one little boy came to rescue and he managed to get Stanley out from her throat. But if he wouldn't be there, she would have, she would have died and just made me made me so emotional because like these things happen on a daily basis like you see you know if you go abroad or even in this country like if you go to seaside you see a lot of sorts of things you know floating you know in the ocean in in the sea you see you see a lot of sort of waste a lot, lot of sort of things and those things are actually killing the creatures the animals the birds you know around and you know it's incredible that we do not realize, we don't take that resp responsibility. And in many instances is that there is no awareness whatsoever. And it's just, it's just such a beautiful book. Um, it's just a children's book, but it, it opens your eyes. It shows you, you know, what the reality of pollution is and of us throwing rubbish everywhere. What, what it means for this environment, what can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Um, that's right. And I think, you know, that was, um, Kozer, to go back to your, your question, you know, the urgency of it maybe might still be a little bit removed, but it was opening up a space to have those conversations. So the Zoom sessions were about creating, but also about dialoguing about the things that matter or don't matter and why they don't matter. Um, and why, you know, if we care about our families, but this is a way of thinking about that future family. So again, it was a lot of those kinds of conversations as well. And it wasn't only face to face, it was through WhatsApp, it was through emails, you know, it was a number of different um, platforms that we used to kind of look at that. I don't know, Maria, if you have any thoughts. Yeah, I was just thinking about uh, Rosal's question. And I, it brought me back in uh, Romania, in my hometown, a big city where recycling was not an option because you had this big bin where everything goes in. So I'm guessing uh, UK gives us the opportunity to recycle outside of our houses. We've got three bins. So we have green, blue, we have brown. So this raises a, an interest. It has to come in our habit to recycle, even though our day-to-day -day lives are, are uh, busy and we've got things to do, like children to raise and uh, school to attend. The recycling should, goes, should go as normal, as natural. Uh, that's one thing. Then about you saying uh, about uh, Seasons for Change workshops, of course, we always see online people talking about the environment and the importance of recycling, but we never get to actually be in the space with those people. And these workshops gave me an understanding of how popular this matter is and how important it is to talk to people in power and talk to representatives and be in the same room as they are and share the same uh, ideas. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions in the room. Um, Rosa, can yes. I just say something to what Maria said? Did something really important. Um, so what Maria said is that in her hometown there was just one kind of one bin, you know, where to put all the rubbish. And this is situation in many other countries um, 
many other cities, many other towns um, across the road. And it would be basically many times the problem is that there are no bins for recycling, which if there would be bins, people would put rubbish there. Obviously, it's an awareness as well, but the bins are major problems as well, problem as well because if there are not enough bins, where do people supposed to put, you know, the recycling in? Where, where are they going to put it? If there is nothing, just one big skip for everything, which gets been, when, it, when that gets full, filled up, there is nowhere to put the rubbish. So obviously, everything's going to end up on the ground, everywhere, just not in the bin because the bin is already full. And I think it would be great if countries can work together and if the fundings can be used to purchase more recycling bins, that would be great. Or please put them like easily, you know, so they are easily accessible for everyone to use. That's these are my thoughts as well. To add. Yes, Kozer, uh, you've said, and in Coventry there's a bin strike. Yes, Maria has shared stories with me about her having to take bags and bags and bags of <laughs> um, rubbish to, to to dispose of it. And that's because you're able to, you have a vehicle, you etc, etc. So, um, you know, I think it, it's highlighting that a lot of these everyday issues are, are really important for us to, to educate other families about these, these, these topics because it is quite um, important and you know one of the things that I know that speaking with other families we realize that pride if a family has pride in themselves or in their home or where they live they'll take care of it you know because I know I get often asked by the council can you sort the the, the pollution out in in page hall can you do this and you know they they try and ask why do they just throw things on the floor why do they some of it is if you're bringing a family from a space where they maybe don't even have a home and they're living on a camp and you know as Yasmin said they have just one big bin for the whole kind of area it's just not on their radar it's not that they don't want to it's just that the, it's that practice isn't there that education or that understanding isn't there but i think once you engage and once you explain and show it might take a little bit of time but then that sense of pride is there and you know there's um it's an important thing when you go into a roma home and again there are obviously families that are very poor in the uk and you know but still there's a lot of pride and cleanliness is a very big part of our community um, it's something that we take very much pride in our home. And so, you know, extending that, seeing that the, the city or their neighborhood is also part of their home, I think is a, is a key point um, that we're trying to use the book to kind of teach that as well. Oh. Questions? Um, oh, we see... Um, I'll read the comment out by Prue. If we could use your book and stories for our imagination, reading cafes, our sessions are free and with deprived communities where we tell stories using art and music, give good and free book. My e yes, absolutely. I will absolutely send the book to you and um, we can get copies out to you. We're currently translating the book into Slovak, Romanes and Romanian. So we're going to print those off within the next two weeks and also start distributing those far and wide. So I can send you the, the three versions of the book. Um, and then Catherine, you said, just curious, when translating the books, oh, and thinking about the language around recycling and climate change being very specific and nuanced, were there any words or concepts that didn't easily translate and how did you navigate that? Yes, Yasmin, Maria, also another woman who's doing the current version, has we've had conversations around that. So Yasmin? Yes, they were words which weren't easily. They, they, were, they, they weren't words basically for for those specific. For example, recycling. That there wasn't a word. There's no word in Roma language that could basically explain this word. However, I did explain this term within a book. I elaborated on that within a book, which basically made, I made it understandable for Roma speakers, especially Slovak and Roma speakers, because just to um just to let you let, let everyone know, all the audience know, Roma language uh, is not 
Roma language has um, many dialects and sub dialects. Um, it's, it has over over hundred different dialects and sub dialects, and it's not not just one. It's it's not the same. And for example, Slo Slovakian um, Roma community speaks about di nine different dialects just within Slovakia, and they can they can they can still understand each other. But for example, a Polish Roma community might not understand them anymore. So you have to be very specific when you explain these words within the book. You need to use the right dialect. There is none such a, a only universal dialect, unfortunately. There was before, but it's, it's been all changed now because the Roma community has been traveling from one you know, country to another, different countries. Many words were picked up from other countries as well. So it did change the original format. Not a lot of Roma people are using the original Roma words. You know the um, the old Roma words that they were used thousand years ago, unfortunately, which is a shame because that makes it even harder to translate material because it doesn't have to be always accessible to everyone, and you know not everyone might be able to understand that material. That's why it's important to use several Roma dialects to make it easier for everyone to understand. But yes, there, there were some words which were very difficult to um, translate. So I did explain and elaborated on those words within the book. That's right. And Claudia, who's just who's a Romanian Roma woman in Coventry, um, she just sent her translation of the book. And she said, Rosa, I had to change a few things here and there so that it made sense. And, and that's fine. You know, it, it's about what's going to work and what feels right for the community. So. I thought it'd be nice to just show a little bit of the book so you can see it. Um, so I'll share my screen. Hopefully my computer doesn't overheat too much. Can you see that? Can you see the book? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so this is Corco Dusha Saves the Park. So it was actually Marcela who um, came up with the idea that she loves Corcodusha trees and she misses that. And in Liverpool, she has to go four or five bus stops to go get the fruit, but that she makes that effort with her with her children to go do that. Um, and it was, you know, one of the, the kind of, um, it stuck. And a lot of the families from that workshop really like this idea of calling our superhero kind of character Corcodusha. So we kept workshopping that idea. Um, I'll share. You can see here are the authors of the book that wanted to be listed. Um, and they're just in alphabetical order. Some families didn't want to be listed. That's fine. Um, one thing about the that we also mention in the book is that with Roma families, we have kind of our legal name and then we have our house name. So um, you might see a mix here of legal names and house names and I think for authorities that's a kind of confusing or for schools that can be a little bit confusing even for me I have Rosemary which is my legal name but then I have my house name Rosa um, so again it, it's it's we not we wanted to honor that in the in the book um, and yeah we have a little bit of information on the families on GRT GRT is something that's used within the UK, but Roma is an umbrella term throughout Europe and the world, but within um, the UK there is a distinction and Gypsy Roma Traveler are the terms, so GRT are the terms that are often used. Um, as any book, it has in memory of someone and this was um, uh, Maria and her, her partner who did the graphics for the book um, asked if they could honor her and of course we said yeah, um, yes. Um, so this you can see the book as well. It's in black and white in some parts, and in other parts, um, we added a pop of color. And this was one of the artistic. Um, I think in the presentation you might recognize some of these visuals. So again, we wanted to really honor the kids' drawings and kind of insert those within the larger story. Um, this is the Roma flag and again it was thinking about protesting and being inspired by Greta but one of the things that emerged for us was that 
the kids wanted to see a superhero. And, you know, I, I'm always saying we all are a superhero. We all have a, a superpower. We just need to kind of find it and own it. And they, you know, also really took to that and were then creating their own superpower, superheroes. And, and there was a lot of pride in them um, creating their characters and the things that their characters did. Um, the the Corco Dusha, one of the things that's, that Coco is kind of her, her nickname that she goes by, uh, Coco sees that there's a, a dirty park, so she decides and, and questions what she can do. She just, you know, decides to clean it up with her family and friends. Um, she writes to the city council and says, please, can you help me? There's a poem in there by, um, and we, we inserted Ollie's actual writing into the book. Um, and the, the kids say that they want to send the letters to the people in power, to the people in, in the city council, um, to help them kind of keep the park clean. Um, and, you know, the kids also came up with house rules. What are some of the things that we want to do within the house? Um, so, and Korkodusha ends up saving the park. And we have a little bit about the funders, and then here's some information about the different words we use within the book. Um, and then the the final back, uh, the, the back of the book. Um, so all of these ideas came from the families. I kind of pieced them all together because I was at the, um, at all of the workshops. I asked the families if they were okay with this version of the book. Some, most of the families, some families were like, Rosa, I don't have time to check this book, so no thank you. <laughs> you know, people are busy. Um, and so, yes, and so right now we're in a stage where we are making the film of the process of the book. We will share that. We will also have another lab day for looking at visuals and the importance of visuals within the Roma community, both sharing the film, looking at this book, looking at other campaigns that the Roma families have been involved in and other Roma women. Um, and again, look, discussing what, what some of the next steps might be. I don't know if Yasmin or Maria, you have anything you'd like to say at this point? Um, I just would like to say if any community or anyone is thinking about starting the same project or a similar project, I just want to give them all a very short message. Um, I would like to say that, you know, don't, do not get discouraged. Do not be afraid, even if things might, 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 might seem to be more difficult. Just go for it. Keep going until you reach the desired target and you can do it. Pursue your dreams. This is my message to everyone who would like to start something similar or the same project. Because everything is possible. We just need to put our hands together and work on it together and we can, we can achieve anything. This is what I believe. No matter from what community we come from, whether we are, you know, marginalized or disadvantaged community, larger or smaller community, everything is possible. We just need to put our hands together and work together and believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Yasmin. Maria, any thoughts? My hope for this book is for Corpodusha to become a leitmotif of Roma community. And Corpodusha saves the part to be the first volume of many to come, first film of many to come, and first uh, educational project of this kind. Uh, things can be achieved even with uh, Roma community. People need to be aware of that and be aware that Roma community is a hardworking community full of people willing to change and to be educated. And children is for adults as well and 
Thank you for that, Maria. Thank you. And um, and just to uh, also, yes. In terms of uh, community and our head, in terms of. I think we've lost the last part of that, Maria. Um, but yes, in terms of, I think, cultural heritage and community, it's important to to um, work together and um, try and, and make, I think, yeah, w be along. <laughs> Technology is failing us today. Um, yes, yeah, so, I, and, and that's my final, I think, point about the, the, the that I would like to make is that Roma and non-Roma can work together and, you know, it doesn't have to be Roma, it can be any marginalized community. It can be a community with mixed abilities, disability, um, it, it, it really can be women, children, it, it, again, it, it the formula or the method, you know, this idea of co-creation, it's about honoring people's voices, their experiences, their time, their expertise. It might come in a number of different ways. It might be shared in a number of different ways, but that's still valuable. Um, and that through, you know, as an artist and a researcher and a dancer and a mom, you know, it's bringing those things together and seeing what, what happens and to not assume and to be open to, you know, the, the, the process and to not be fixated. I had no idea what was going to emerge. Um, but fortunately, I was given permission at Seasons for Change to do and to just explore and they trusted me. And, you know, I, I took that very seriously. And also when you're given, you know, X amount of money, that's another responsibility that I felt like as a Roma member, you know, I need to be as transparent as possible. So I was always sharing with everyone the finances behind that. And, you know, that's another point is so that people could feel that they were being valued and that maybe so-and-so made this much money but you are too, because you bring this expertise. So it was just being very transparent about that, about the finances as well. Um, and yes, I we have a few minutes left. Any final questions, comments? I've lost Maria. Maria's frozen, but luckily she looks beautifully frozen. Not, you know, those funny kind of, and you stay frozen and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, me and my love. Yes. Um, I just want to add one final point. Um, I personally believe that every community needs to be recognized and included. And if the community is being shown that they are appreciated and you know they there is a desire, the demand for them to be included, they will get in, they, they will, you know, engage. Because I know there is always a common misconception, Roma community or even any other community, they, they might not get engaged, they're not going to be engaged, they're not engaging, that, that's the problem. It's it, The problem doesn't lie in that, it lies in the attitude what others have towards the community. That's why community becomes disengaged, because of the attitude and because of non appreciations and because of exclusion. That's that's what it is really all about. And I, be, I strongly believe if Roma community is being, when Roma community will be appreciated as other communities and as everyone deserves, everyone deserves to be appreciated. I, I, I know that they will engage because this project is, it's, um, it's basically shows, it, it basically is a proof of that, that the Roma community will engage and does engage when they feel appreciated and, and welcomed and their opinions are heard and voices are heard. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. That's right. That's right. And, you know, if anyone wants to contact me after or, you know, wants to learn more about the project or receive the book, do just let me know. Um, as part of the Weave project now, these, this lab day, this method um, is being offered within the project so that other um, arts and culture and heritage institutions or artists might want to you know get in touch and get and understand how or what we did why we did it a big part of the weave project is working with cultural communities and using the arts and culture to engage and to offer a platform and so this last the second capacity building strand is about that about 
describing different methods that have worked in the different environments, in the different contexts, um, the different countries. Um, so I hope you have learned a little bit about what we did, why we did it, and maybe hopefully feel a little bit more um, willing to try something and to see how it something similar or not might be happen in your in your own communities in your own context um, because I as a researcher I know that this method is transferable and we could talk about the data and all of that um, but just as a person <laughs> you know you can see that there is real um, potential when you bring pe different people together and work together and collaboratively and you know uh, prove um, you, know, you have experience with this as well um, and, and really using arts and culture to engage communities from a number of different um, backgrounds so hopefully we can continue to learn from each other lift each other up um, be kind to each other there's so much hatred in the world like if anything let's just be kind to each other and listen um, and just offer spaces to be seen and heard. Um, so thank you, everyone. I hope you have learned and understood and, and maybe Korkodusha will save your park. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for coming. Thank, yes, thank you for coming. Thank you. I thought it was wonderful and you're very good at explaining. You're a brilliant artist and you've brought so many different people together.